Welcome back everyone to the one and only English news program The Asia News with me, Vanessa. Hundreds of volunteers participated in an international coastal cleanup day. Hundreds of volunteers participated in mass cleanup drive along the coast of Manila Bay to mark the International Coastal Cleanup Day. Government workers and volunteers collected sachets, rubber slippers, and other non biodegradable waste that have been washed ashore. We need to do these cleanup drives for our environment and to discourage people from throwing trash on the seaside. Kendrick Lopez, 18, who was a student studying at nearby college, decided to join the cleanup drive to help attract visitors to Manila Bay, which was famous for its idyllic sunsets. Para po mapaganda po yung this initiative will help make our coastal area in Manila Bay better so that our tourists and visitors will see the beauty of the bay. The Philippines is the planet's number one polluter when it comes to releasing plastic waste into the ocean, accounting for 36% of the total inputs globally. According to an updated on April 2022 report by the Our World in Data project at the University of Oxford, a scientific online publication focusing on researchers into global issues such as poverty, disease, hunger, climate change, and inequality. Critics say laws, regulations, solid waste are inadequate and poorly enforced, leaving governments and communities struggling to address the sachet pollution crisis. International Coastal Cleanup Day is a global event held every third Saturday of September to raise awareness of the growing garbage problems affecting coastlines around the world. South Korean president attends the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol and his wife Kim kyung hae departed for London on Sunday to attend Queen Elizabeth's funeral. The National Security Advisor Kim Sung Han said the decision to attend the funeral reflected the historical importance of South Korea's bilateral ties with Britain, the achievements of Queen Elizabeth, and the affection of the monarch had shown South Korea since her visit in 1999. Yoon will then travel to New York to attend the UN General Assembly, where he is expected to give a keynote speech on September 20. Yoon will also visit Canada during the last leg of his week-long trip, set to end on September 24, as the two countries mark the 60th anniversary of diplomatic relations next year. Putin says he has yet to decide to attend G20 summit in Indonesia. Russian President Vladimir Putin said he had not yet decided whether to personally attend a summit of the group of G20 nations in Indonesia on November 2022. I'll see, I have already been to Bali. The place itself is good, beautiful, but it's not about the beauty. We will see how the situation develops in the economy and in other areas. I have an invitation to visit the G20 and the president of the host country personally informed me about this when he was in Moscow. Then he called and said again, keep in mind, there is a certain pressure, but my position is tough. We want to see you at this summit. I'll see, we'll decide it. Russia will take part. Putin also said that his meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping the previous day at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Uzbekistan had been normal. Speaking to the reporters after the summit, Putin said he had discussed measures to boost Russia-China trade during his meeting with Xi, whose concern about the war in Ukraine Putin publicly acknowledged for the first time during the session. Women arrested over New Zealand child suitcase murder taken to Seoul prosecutor's office. A woman charged with murdering what is believed to be her two children whose remains were found in suitcases in New Zealand was taken to Seoul's prosecutor's office. South Korea's Ministry of Justice ordered the Seoul High Prosecutor's Office to personally arrest the woman upon a request from New Zealand authorities. Authorities said the 42-year-old Korean-born New Zealand woman is suspected of fleeing to South Korea in 2018 after allegedly killing her then 7-year-old and 10-year-old children in Auckland. 
New Zealand has to formally seek extradition of the suspect within 45 days in order for a South Korean court to review whether to send her back, said the Ministry of Justice. 98 China ASEAN Expo concluded with over 200 cooperation projects were signed. This year's China ASEAN Expo the 19th China ASEAN Expo concluded in the city of Nanning in Guangxi, Zhuang Autonomous Region, South China, seeing the signing of over 200 international and domestic cooperation projects. Themed Sharing RCEP New Opportunities, Building a Version of 3.0 China ASEAN FTA, this year's Expo was the first edition after China and the ASEAN announced a comprehensive strategic partnership in 2021. The RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, came into force at the beginning of 2022. The four-day event highlighted new business opportunities of China-ASEAN cooperation, during which 267 international and domestic cooperation projects were signed, with a total of investment of over 56 billion US dollars. A total of 88 online and offline economic and trade activities were held, facilitating more than 3,500 trade and project cooperation matches, and 2,000 high-level forums were held, covering a range of topics from industrial cooperation to science and technology. At this year's Expo, a number of initiatives and research reports were released in areas such as healthcare and communication. Some institutions were also launched, such as the Chinese ASEAN Technology Transfer Alliance. At the Expo's opening, Chinese Vice Premier Hang Sen said China is willing to work with ASEAN countries to build a new 3.0 version of a free trade area between the two parties. State leaders of Cambodia, Singapore, Thailand also expressed their support for the initiative. Han also stated that China will do its best to implement the RCEP to ensure the huge potential of the integrated market is unlocked. It is necessary to promote the connection between ASEAN's development strategy and China's economic development express train. It is necessary to promote the strategic alignment between the ASEAN 2025 connectivity outlook and China's Belt and Road Initiative. We should strengthen our cooperation in the fields of economy, trade, investment and tourism and achieve mutual benefit and win-win situation through the implementation of RCEP. Kiao Suetain, Consul General of Myanmar in Nanning, also expressed his support for the third edition of the ASEAN-China Foreign Trade Agreement, or FTA. ASEAN-China bilateral comprehensive strategy partnership will show active roles for both China and ASEAN for reshaping and enhancing the economic cooperation in the region. Collaborating in the concept of open regionalism, I believe that it will effectively facilitate in establishing ASEAN-China bilateral comprehensive strategy partnership and building the third edited version of ASEAN-China FTA. The Expo has been an important platform for promoting regional economic recovery and strengthening China-ASEAN economic and trade cooperation. At least two people died in Typhoon Nanmadol, Bathurst, Japan. Typhoon Nanmadol brought ferocious winds and record rainfall to western Japan as one of the biggest storms to hit the country in years kill at least two people, disrupted transport and forced manufacturers to suspend operations. Japan's 14th typhoon of the season made landfall near Kagoshima City late before battering the western island of Kyushu and roaring onto the main island of Honshu on Monday morning. Public broadcaster NHK said one man was found dead inside his car, which was submerged to the rooftop in the middle of a field, while another man died after being caught in a landslide, one other person remains missing, and at least 87 people have been injured. The Trade Ministry said about 340,000 households, most of them in Kyushu, were without electricity early on Monday, while Kyushu Railway said it had halted operations on Kyushu and Japan Airline and ANA Holdings cancelled about 800 flights, NHK reported. The storm made landfall again in Shimane Prefecture in western Honshu after tracking the coastline earlier and was heading east about 35 km per hour or 22 miles per hour, the Japanese Meteorological Agency said. Up to 400 mm or 15.75 inches of rain was expected in central Japan's Tokai region, the nation's industrial heartland, over the next 24 hours. South Korea's captain returns home for upcoming friendlies match against Costa Rica and Cameroon. South Korea captain 
Son Heung-min returned home to join his national soccer team to prepare for the upcoming friend list against Costa Rica and Cameroon. The Tottenham host poor forward ended his scoring drought in stunning fashion with a blistering hat-trick in a 6-2 Premier League win over Leicester City. Speaking to the reporters at the training round in Paju, head coach Paulo Bento repeated his lack of concern about Son's goal drought prior to the Spurs win and said his team is almost ready and prepared for the Qatar World Cup. We have the things uh, almost ready uh, and prepared. So I think that um, the organizations until, until now, it's, um, it's okay for us. Sun Thursday will lead the Koreans against fellow World Cup qualifiers Costa Rica on Friday and Cameroon four days later on September 27. The friendlies will give Pento at least opportunity to look at this main squad before the build-up to the World Cup finals, where the South Koreans have been drawn to face Uruguay, Ghana and Portugal. And that's the wrap-up for today, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekend and see you soon.